Hey folks, it's Cal again, and uh, look what I just picked up. And I figure this will be the start of a small series on fixing up this car. Uh, as you may recall from earlier videos I've got on my channel, I have a NH Pajero manual, which I bought as a bit of a beater. And uh, yeah, I've fixed it up, done some things, put a couple of videos together on that. but. My wife said to me that my son, who's learning to drive, <clears throat> he's, you know, he's an indoor kid and the likelihood of him wanting to drive if he has to also learn manual right now is low and she can't drive stick and she doesn't want to learn. So she asked me to get an auto. So what did I do? I bought an auto Pajero to replace the manual Pajero. Although this is a 1998 99. You know how model codes are a bit weird when they sell cars. NL Pajero. Yes, it says 1998, right up there, October 98. Uh, this car is one owner, <clears throat> that's legit, one owner, from my home state of Victoria. 301,000 Ks on it. Um, he was pretty sure it's in Great Nick. Uh, look, it's got 300,000 Ks on it, I know. <laughs> It's got problems. Uh, it is dual fuel. Um, let's see if you can see under there. I'm not sure how big that gas tank is. I have no idea if that's going to buck up, fuck up my roadworthy, but we'll find out. Um, <clears throat> geez, those straps look a little rusty. It does have a fuel tank. I believe it's what they call a short wheelbase fuel tank in front of the diff. Somewhere in there, if you can just see it back there uh which is about 52 liters so i'm told um others have told me the people i trust more it's actually more like 45 but that's okay <clears throat> uh most of the rubbers uh most of the bushes are in good nick i've checked that because when i bought my nh pajero i couldn't get a roadworthy until i replaced fucking everything including the body mount rubbers but then again the guy I used to use for roadworthies was an anal retentive dude and would just ping me on everything. Um, yeah, what's interesting to say about this car? Oh, <laughs> you Pajero owners delight or rejoice. It's got a working inclinometer. It's even got the juice in it still. Now, that's rare. You don't find those at all. Um, annoying things. Uh, the dual fuel system... Uh, depending on what button you press when you start it, you can get a no-start condition and you've got to sort of sit there and twiddle the key a bit and press the buttons and stuff. I believe it's something to do with the LPG controller not turning the fuel injectors on. Yeah. That's my area of expertise, electrical shit, oscilloscopes and whatnot, so I'll, I'll work that out. Apparently, so <laughs> facts about this car, these are the important things. Um, uh, never, ever been in four-wheel drive. So I took the car for a test drive, and the old fella, who's 85 years old, the first thing I did was test that four-wheel drive engaged, because as you guys, Pajero owners, would know, it's a vacuum-based uh, uh, rod that slides in and out of the front diff, <clears throat> and that vacuum switch is controlled by the controller, and those lines can rot out and whatever. He goes, what are you doing? I said, I'm putting it in four-wheel drive. He goes, I've never, ever done that, ever. Now, I, I guess I believe him, but this, this is kind of... There's something wrong with this lever. There's something loose in the mounting plate of it, and it's, like, once you get to here, it seems a bit loose. I don't know, Pajero owners, you probably agree. Certainly my NH does not have that issue. Uh, anyway, he says, in, t uh, in uh, 23 years, no one's ever sat in the back seat. Um, he might have put stuff in it, but I kind of believe it. These seats are mint. Look at the door cards. <laughs> and that's just Mitsubishi glue failing. <clears throat> that's amazing. He also said uh, that their rear seats have never been down, this third row. I, I haven't actually lowered these yet. I'll do it later. I believe him. <laughs> Obviously, he's put things in the boot, but look at this carpet. <clears throat> I don't know if you've seen if there's any videos of the carpet in my NH, but, oh man, it's just got thick, 
matted oil stains all through it. But it's a beater, right? So I didn't really care at the time. Um, got your Heyman Reese. I think this is a low, low rated one. Um, I do believe the high rated one mounts to there. But guess what? This is the same chassis as the NH. I can just port all the shit across. If I wanted to, I could probably get the tow bar from the NH onto it. I'm not too fussy about the tow bar. Um, yeah, it's 300,000 Ks. All right. Let's talk about obvious things that are wrong with this. Uh, that's missing, and he's got it propped up with a bit of poly, polystyrene. That's a $5 part from Jolly's. Uh, the gas <coughs> system is down here. Uh, now, you guys are going to slap me. I don't really remember. They're not called gas carburetors. They're called something else. Um, but, yeah, this is what provides gas. There's a little metal... Uh, uh, ring that goes around the intake and it provides gas directly into the intake <clears throat> How it meters gas if it's taking signals from the MAF, I don't know I've never owned an LPG car before in my life. I'm actually excited to learn about how that all works um, It does run uh, as you know, this is the well you may not know this is the single overhead cam 24 valve These are only about hundred and forty Kilowatt the dual overhead cam ones were higher can't talk about the torque um, of the motor. What's it got? New radiator that was leaking. He just spent $900 on a fuel pump and injectors because he never ever ran it on petrol and the fuel pump failed and the injectors gummed up. 900 bucks. Um, he also <coughs> spent hundreds of dollars, like 600 bucks, on what he thought was <coughs> diagnosing the failed MAF. It's fine, there's nothing wrong with the MAF. That's what they thought was causing the car to not start on petrol. Actually, I guess that kind of answers the question about how gas is metered, doesn't it? Uh, anyway, um, the gas could be a, maybe an alpha N system, um, which basically means it's just engine speed and throttle uh, throttle position. Uh, what else went wrong with it? Um, that was wrong with it that he had work done. Oh, it's had a head rebuild, um, 2008. Uh, had water in cylinder four, um, obviously blown head gasket. I don't know if that's an issue with the 6G74s. Um, might be, but I wasn't aware of it. Uh, it does have a massive, massive rocker cover leg. <laughs> like, he goes, oh, it doesn't drip oil. I took it for a test drive, pull up in his driveway, and the very first thing I saw was oil on the ground. There may even be some oil down here already. No, not yet. I'll get some video of that later as I dig into that problem but it has a massive leak. And uh, let's actually, I might get a torch and come back and show you that. Okay, I'm back, let's see if this, all right, let's uh, zoom in. I'll just actually focus that. Yep, so you can see that oil leak there. You see down in the bell housing, right down in there, how wet it is. I thought it might have been a rear main seal at first, which would have been annoying. with a lot of labor to get that fixed. Oh, yeah, down here. Um, yeah, look down there on the alternator mount. Uh, pretty sure there's a crack in that manifold, but um, I'm going to get some high temp permaseal shit and uh, just uh, wick it into the gap and see if that fixes it. <coughs> this is a beater for the family. I don't really care. <coughs> Worst case, I could go and grab one from Jolly's, well, the local records, which is called Jolly's. But you can see everything is wet. <clears throat> Let me see if I can dive under it here and show you. I don't have the I don't have the jacks on it yet, but I'm pretty sure we'll be able to get under here and have a look at this. Oh yeah, look at that. Look at that. Wet. Look over there. Um, I think that's a that little cylinder i think it might be the vacuum canister for the front diff engagement i can't recall um <clears throat> could even have a possibly have a uh, sump gasket failure no big deal these are like pennies in the dollar com in compared to you know like thousands of dollar fixes uh one thing that my nh had was a uh, massive leak on the output shaft from the back of the uh transfer case um Oh, that must be the new fuel tank. Look at it. 
That is not a low, long wheelbase fuel tank. That is a custom welded aluminum or steel jobby. Mm, okay. <laughs> uh, little bit of cracking on. I talked about rubbers. A little bit of cracking on that. Now, whether you get pinged for that is going to depend greatly on your roadworthy guy. Uh, that's probably easier to see without the light, actually. And up there, those are the body mount rubbers. They look really good, right? They're the ones I got pinged on on the NH. Um, uh, the, these are really good. These um, side steps, they're strong. Not like the shitty ones on my NH. Uh, no leaks from. See that? That's just weeping. See that? That's just weeping from the out, front output shaft of the transfer case. That's going to be fine. <laughs> And looking at the auto box, I don't see any major leaks out of the auto, which is good. Um, the fluid is also uh, <coughs> still slightly red. It is not bright red, it's brownish red, but it doesn't smell burnt. But I will be dropping that and changing the filter today. Uh, let's see, what else? Uh, rear tyres are new, front tyres are not. They're probably going to fail. Um, but guess what? I've got a brand new set of tyres on that, and it's the same wheels, so I'll be swapping them over. I actually have a plan, which I might do as part of this video series, to install a tyre pressure sensor kit. Um, and I'm going to be using um, these uh, new balance beads for balancing those tyres. And now for the life of me, I can't remember where I put those bloody beads. Um, there's somewhere over there, I think, or over here. Oh, whatever. I've got a huge tub of balance beads designed specifically for four-wheel drive cars. You know what? They're actually in this box. Got these online. ABC beads, not suitable for low profile. Uh, they work for motorbikes because the wheels are always rotating in plane with the angle if that makes sense. Great for motorbikes. Uh, and also great for four-wheel drives and trucks where the lateral, you don't have that the lateral forces, right? I won't be putting them in the Legnum. Let's put it that way. That car gets thrown around mountain corners. Um, so yeah, no, not gonna be doing that. Uh, yeah. Tinting's obviously peeling off, big deal. Paint's in really good nick, except for, as you might expect, the bonnet. I'm not sure if it's going to catch it in this light because there's a lot of frost this morning, but the clear coat's going. I'll add that to the video series as well, uh, where I'll be doing the clear coat, you know, the cheap way. Um, plenty of YouTube videos on that. I'll do it and you can get to see how much I suck at it. Uh, I think I mentioned the radiator's new. I did notice a leak uh, this morning. I'll overlay the photo. Um, leaving it overnight there was oil leaks which i expected and there was a coolant drop um now uh worst case oh, worst case there isn't really a worst case um what i suspect it'll be is either um just a hose clamp etc i don't use these fuckers anymore i use the um spring clamps which manufacturers use oh, oh either that or the clamps where there's like a spring underneath they're like a worm drive, but they're self-tightening. I've got a bunch of those lying around somewhere. Um, or your traditional um, spring clamps. Here, like that style. Like that one right there in the middle of frame. I'll be using those kind of things because they stay tight. Um, right, let's talk about... Uh, <clears throat> let's talk about... Let's talk about timing belts. Based on all the documentation the guy gave me, it's a full service history, but it's written in his own, you know, language and wording that suits his brain, not mine. It appears that the timing belts were changed at 220,000 Ks. It's now 300, and that was 2013. Uh, so they say 100,000 Ks or 60 months, whichever one comes first. Uh, it's come. <laughs> so I suspect I'm going to pop the covers off, <coughs> off the here. These are single overhead, but they're still an interference engine, I believe. 
um, so I can't afford to leave that. <clears throat> and that that water leak might be that water leak might be the water pump weep, <clears throat> i.e., if the if the timing belt was changed at 213, so was the water pump. I hope maybe it wasn't. Maybe it's just a really old water pump. Repco has a deal on. Uh, it's like 500 bucks for a full timing belt and water pump set. Um, so I'm going down there today. I may even take this thing uh, <coughs> and go see if I can pick one up. Not a bad deal. Timing belt kits can be anywhere from five to $700 uh, if you include the water pump. I can't think of anything else right now, but if I do, I'll re come back and recontinue this video. So otherwise, the next thing you'll see is me working on it.